interstellar radiation field at high latitudes today. So just to start off, um, there are mainly three types of radiation that we see in and around the galaxy. Um, the first is starlight, which is kind of obvious, and then we see dust emissions, which, which is essentially just um, absorbing re-emitted starlight, and then finally we have the cosmic microwave background. And I'll be focusing on that dust portion of the spectrum today. So this is a model um, spectral energy distribution of um, an infrared portion of the light spectrum, for, and it's the emission of dust. So it can be split into two main parts. Um, first, over here, you see like a modified black body, which is essentially the large dust grains um, in the interstellar medium. And they um, emit, so they, they act as thermometers for the dust in this region because they emit at a certain temperature and they maintain that temperature. And then this portion over here, um, is what we call in unidentified infrared bands. And this is where smaller dust grains or large molecules emit. Um, and we think that it could be polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in this that are emitted or other large molecules, kind of like that. Um, so you can see in this model too that they're varying the radiation density and that changes the large dust grain emissions but it doesn't really have any effect on the small dust grain emissions. We'll kind of go over that again later. So um, interstellar dust is the main cause of extinction, which is um, either a decrease in the intensity of starlight or reddening in starlight. And so it happens in two ways. Either the dust can scatter the light in different directions, or it absorbs the light. And so in this um, particular extinction curve, we see that the um, dotted line there is the absorption part of the dust um, extinction, and then that solid line is the total extinction due to both scattering and um, absorption. And so that, that main feature there, the, the curve at the top, is um, in the UV. So we can see that shorter wavelengths are more affected by uh, dust absorption. So kind of getting into the regions that I explored, um, I looked at 16 different regions, um, 14 of which are those black squares, and those are just high latitude regions with dust that we saw a lot of structure in and varying temperatures. And then this pink block over here is the Pleiades, and over there is Orion. So we used three different maps to uh, look at these different regions. First, we used a YSW3 map um, created by Meisner and Finkbeiner that uh, had all of the point sources removed as well as the zodiacal light. And it's a 12 micron full sky map which spans from about 7 to 17 micron. And then we use a EV minus V reading map created using um, IRAS 100 micron data. And EV minus V is essentially the effective column density or the amount of extinction due to um, the dust you see there. And then finally, we use a dust temperature map created using IRAS 100 micron data and Derby 140 micron data. So the way we analyzed this data was um, first by using DS9, which is just a visualization software that you can look at different tiles of each of these full sky maps. And so what I did first was look at the temperature maps and then I fit it like we put contours over that to see where there's different, like a temperature gradient. And then I place regions about one degree each um, in those contours to kind of fill out the space. We then save those regions and place them on the EV minus V map and the W3 maps. So then we use an extension, like an extension to DS9 called Fun Tools. Um, and this allowed us to get the counts and the pixels in each of those one degree regions. And by taking the counts over the pixels, we could get the temperature, the magnitude for the UV-V, and the data number for the YSW3. And this, this isn't actually the whole tile size. They're each 10 degree tiles. And this is just a small portion of that. 
So one of our first results was this plot here. Um, so here we have the temperature, and that's from the temperature map. And then here we have the um, normalized Ys data, and that's normalized using the EV minus V. So we see a strong linear correlation between the temperature and the small dust grain emissions, which is what this normalized um, W3 is. And uh, this tells us that in areas with higher radi or energy density, which is indicated by higher temperature, we see more of these small dust grain emissions. So this tells us that not only is the energy density changing, but so is the spectrum of the radiation. And going forward, we see that again in this plot, which is just Orion and the Pleiades, we had to plot this separately because as you can see, the temperature is much, gets much higher in these regions, and we see a lot more of those small dust grain emissions. Um, this is due to the fact that in both these regions, we have stars in the fields, so they, um, they can emit more UV photons, and then we'll see more of the small dust grain emissions. So this is just um, further examination of how extinction affects the small dust grain emissions. So as you saw in that extinction curve, UV photons are especially susceptible to extinction. Um, and we see that here with kind of an exponential decay. It's a little hard to see because they're all just meshed in there together. But um, so we've got the extinction here. And so as that increases, we see fewer um, emissions of the small dust grains. And that's kind of more apparent when we look at individual regions. So here is the log of that um, normalized W3 data. So you can see in each of these that they're decaying. Um, and that just goes to show like more that it's kind of an inverse relationship there. So finally, we looked at the hardness of the radiation fields in each of these regions. And that just means uh, we looked at the ratio of a particular UV wavelength and took that over an optical wavelength to find um, where we were having more UV and versus optical. And then here we have EV or W3 over EV minus V again, but this is when there's no extinction. Um, and we did that by just going back to zero here and we used this um, intercept there. So we were expecting a sort of uh, linear sort of correlation here because we were expecting more UV, we'd see more small dust grain emissions, but um, that's not exactly the case. As you can see, it's kind of just scattered all over the place. And we think that's due to the fact that um, there's varying numbers of small dust grains in each of these regions. It's not constant. The small dust grain to large dust grain ratio just isn't the same everywhere like models would have. So our main conclusions from this are that as we see energy distribution changing, we also see um, the spectrum changing. And this is verified when we look at the extinction and kind of see that that's changing how, how the light is um, reddened, that kind of thing. And then finally, we see that um, the small to large dust grain ratio is not constant. So the main takeaway is that like in that first model, when only the radiation density was changing, we can see that the spectrum is also changing and the number of small dust grains to large dust grains is changing. And so obviously, the real world is a lot more complicated than the model would have you believe. So I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Adolf Witt, um, the RIE program here at University of Toledo, especially Rick and Linda. And I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation for funding my project.
that as the energy density goes up, there's more moving photons available for absorption. So that's um, while we're on this, I, I struck my curiosity bone. Um, do you know anything about those two points? Yeah. <laughs> so those two points, so some of these last regions that we looked at, these four down here, they're molecular clouds. And um, we think these two regions are so high up there because maybe it's a star forming region or there's something going on in that particular region. Because both of these two regions are very close together. So we think that maybe be an overlapping type of area or something like that. But yeah, those are the only regions we saw anything like that in. So. So, so could this be a way to identify star forming regions if they have a they don't fall on that line or is that something Maybe. you can I I don't know, I didn't do a whole lot of extra research into that kind of thing, but yeah. It could also just be an artifact in the data. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this ratio of W3 upon E B minus V, as it so as the temperature is increased, two things. Either your W3 is increasing or E of B minus V is decreasing. Right. In the subsequent plots, which you showed, if you go to the next plot, yeah. uh, not this, uh, one more, I guess. Yeah, okay. this is W3 of E B minus V of E B minus V. So that is like, this shows that the ratio in, in the Y axis is decreasing because of the increase in E B minus V. So this tells me that your first graph, which you have, therefore with respect to temperature, is it a real artifact of E B minus V decreasing or W3 increasing? That's a good question. Um, I'm not exactly sure I'd have to go through and look at the actual data, because I'm sure for different regions it varied a little bit as far as which which was changing the most. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I think if you if you compare these graphs with the, the one that she showed later, where you know, there was essentially no correlation, it shows really that that the extinction is the major factor that changes the density of the radiation field, and while it changes the density, it also changes the energy distribution. So those two go hand in hand. Any other mechanism, those things would be independent. Okay. There's one more after this plot. Uh, yeah. So how you calculate this x-axis UV upon optical? Okay. So um, for this, we use an online tool that gave us the um, it gave us the intensity in a certain wavelength that we input out to a distance in a certain direction. So for some of these, we went out to about 500 parsecs or so, and um, we looked at different, so we looked at 115 angstrom for the UV, and then 4,500 angstrom for the optical, and so when we looked at each of these regions, we took that ratio for each, like, 10 parsec little section, and then I used a weighted average to get each of these values for each of the regions. All right, well, that's it. That's it for today.